Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr. This is episode 182, and it's going to be the third and final part of the tip. And here we go. Damn, Rosalinda thought as she left Juan's house. My team was supposed to have eyes on her. How did Rodolfo get a hold of her without us knowing? Or maybe Juan is wrong, and she really is back with him. The truth will have to be discovered. As soon as she got back in her vehicle, she was contacting her team. Where is Maria? Does Pinzon have her or not? Juan had given her the phone number that had contacted him. She suspected it was a burner, but gave it to her team to run down. She pulled up Maria's address and drove to see her team. On the way, she called Trent, who was that team's leader. Why is Juan telling me Maria's been taken by Pinzon? What if I had told him I already had people supposedly watching Maria? How would he feel then? Never mind, he feels like I feel. Pissed. Trent decided to go with the professional approach. We were about to knock and try to talk with Maria's housemate. Would you rather we wait until you're here? Yes, wait. I'm only a couple of minutes away. Let's get to the bottom of this. She put the phone down and drove in silence. When she arrived, her team were in a parking lot across from the apartment complex where Maria lived. She drove up to them from the other direction so that she would be close to their driver's side window and put her window down. Is her roommate there for certain? Yes. Okay. What do you know about what happened? Nothing. The place been quiet. We didn't know anything was wrong until you told us. Have you done anything since you found out? We did a sweep of the area. Nothing unusual found. Rosalinda's training kept her from expressing what she would have liked to. Okay, then. Let's get the word from this roommate. She parked and got out. Her team did likewise. Do we know anything about the roommate? Maya Delgado. They've been friends for years. Maria moved in about a year ago after not being able to find any other place to stay. Okay. We'll go up, but I'll talk. You two act as lookouts. They nodded and together moved to the, into the apartment complex. Rosalinda realized they looked strange. They were the only ones wearing suits. She figured they must look like very dim, undercover cops. The apartment was in was the open-air style that made it look like a motel, and perhaps it had been at some point. They got up to the apartment on the second floor, and her team spread out to get a good, good li- sight lines of the place, one in each direction. She had them in her ear, but they wouldn't say anything unless something went wrong. Meanwhile, they were recording her already. She knocked. A young woman with a slightly plump, friendly face answered. Though she looked a little puzzled, she didn't seem afraid. Hi, Rosalinda said in Spanish, putting us on a smile to keep her at ease. I'm Rosalinda Cruz. Are you by any chance Maya Delgado? Uh, yes, Miss Cruz. What is this about? We have word that Rodolfo Pinzon may have taken Maria Palacios. You, I understand, saw him? Now Maya's face fell. How did you know that? Are you with the police? No. We got word through her brother. We're helping him. Her brother doesn't do anything with the government. We're not the government. We just have strengths that can help him. Or more importantly, help Maria. May I come in? She thought about it. Yes. She showed her into the low-rent apartment. The furniture was threadbare. There were toys scattered around. Does Maria have children? Rosalind asked. No, I have a two-year-old boy. I see. You've been friends with Maria for some time? Yes, for almost a decade now, and she's been here for something like a year. The apartment was not as clean as Juan's place. Beyond the toys, there was a bit of dirt and dinginess about the room. Does Maria have a room of her own? No, I only have the one bedroom. My son sleeps with me. Maria sleeps here. The sofa pulls out to a bed. Rosalinda noticed that she hadn't volunteered the name of her son. She doesn't really trust me, she thought. Are you certain Pinzone has her? I think so, but I can't be certain. Tell me why. She and Rodolfo dated for a while. I don't think he told her what he was, though she should have known. She's lived in the neighborhood long enough. Eventually his true colors showed through, and she broke it off. He's been sniffing around here ever since. Maria and I have both been sick with fear about it. Has he done anything to her directly? Yes. He beat her the night she broke up with him. She had a fractured orbital bone that 
has only recently healed, and some other bruises. Rosalinda thought about the next question. She knew that no matter how bad the man, sometimes women went back voluntarily. But she didn't want to sound callous. She decided that laying it out would be the best bet. Sometimes women in tough situations like Maria's might go back to someone who had hurt them. Do you think she might? No, Maya stated, emphatically, but not with anger. No, I know what you mean. Maria, Maria would not. She knows she has a place with me, even if she loses all her money. We're like family. And she learned how bad Rodolfo is. So she's been taken against her will. I think so, though I did not see it happen. Where will he be? Do you have his address or no places where he is likely to go? Maya shook her head. No, Miss Cruz. I'm sorry, but I don't. Rodolfo is always closed mouthed about things like that. But his gang, they're all over this neighborhood. He'll be here, and she'll be put near him, and he'll have protection. Rosalinda nodded. Thank you, Maya. Is there anything else you can tell me? Just that he's dangerous. I've asked around the apartments. There are lots of stories of people he's hurt, things he's stolen, alone, and with his gang. You'll have to be careful. We will. As soon as she left, she met with her team. We'll leave an eye on Mar Maya's apartment. She shouldn't be in any danger, but if someone did see me and they think she's talking, they might go after her. We need to find out where Maria's being held. It'll be here in the 70s territory. Maybe Penzone's still going out, or maybe he's laying low. I say we get some eyes out there and just do facial rec recognition for him or either of the two friends. How many can we get out there? Three dozen or so, Trent answered. They were all up within a day. The data kept flowing, and soon they had a hit. It's a small, two-bedroom bungalow. We have the blueprints. Good, Rosalinda said. This one's mine. No one dared oppose her. That night, she moved in. She turned her power on and became completely invisible. The only trick was getting in the door. She made some noise in their backyard. Sure enough, the lights came on, and a man came out holding a pistol. It was one of the men who had threatened Juan Palacios with Pinzon. She walked up quickly, but quietly. She thrust a syringe into his neck. In one second, he slumped to the ground. She moved inside. Stripe, what'd you see? She heard someone say from another room in Spanish. The room was in a small outlet near the, next to the kitchen. There was a man at the counter eating a sandwich. He had turned towards her, but couldn't see her. He was talking as though to someone out of sight. She stayed silent and moved towards him. He grunted and turned back to his plate. She pulled out another hypo. At the last moment, her weight caused the flooring to creak right behind the man. He stiffened, but before he could so much as turn around again, she put the syringe in his neck. He too slumped to the ground. She looked round. The place was filthy. She would have to be careful where she stepped or she would make noise. She crept around the hall from the kitchen, making a quick check to make sure the dining room was empty, as it had seemed from inside the kitchen. It was, so the rest of the house was accessed by a single hallway. It was likely that Maria and Pinzone would be in the master bedroom, the only door on the left. There's a small bathroom, first door on the right, with the other bedroom, the, uh, the second door on the right, more or less across from the master bedroom's door. The master bedroom's door was closed, which all but confirmed her suspicions. Still, she checked. The bathroom and the small bedroom were both empty. She heard noises of a struggle coming from the room. There was no time for hesitation. She kicked the door in. She did a quick check. Pinzone was on top of Maria and had turned partway toward the door. There was a pistol on the bedside table, and he was reaching for it when she caught up to him. Her knife was out. Only the first couple of inches of the blade were visible. She slashed the back of his hand hard. As he howled and yanked his hand back from the pain, she flicked with her blade and sent the gun spinning off the table. He was confused, and she used it to her advantage. He had rolled onto his side and seemed intent on kicking into the air at the unseen but clearly real attacker. Maria could not help. She had been tied to the bed. Rosalinda took a step back. When one leg thrashed out, she cut it. He howled and kicked harder, but she had anticipated that. She took a step around the side of the bed and instead thrust her knife into the side of his throat, then pulled the blade free. Blood spurted out and Pinzone gurgled a scream. Maria was now screaming as well. 
She had been terrified of Pinzon. Now she was terrified of him, but also of this invisible attacker. Maria, calm down. I am here to help, Rosalinda said. I'm getting you out of here. She dropped her invisibility, and Maria gasped. Rosalinda couldn't blame her. Seeing someone appear in front of you, blade in hand, and a fair amount of blood on you, was enough to shake anyone. Add to that Maria's outfit, which was a military-style suit with a face mask, and anyone would be scared. Are you an enemy of Rodolfo? She asked as Rosalinda started to cut her free. No, Rosalinda said. Not a friend of mine, Maria added. Not really, she said. Wait, is this about my brother, what he can do? She asked. She knew, Rosalinda thought. Interesting. Only in part, Rosalinda said. She had a button on her mask. Main target down, others out, asset freed, pick up in three. She hit the same button as a voice in her ear said, Acknowledged. Pick up en route. And the other part? The other part? Rosalind asked. Most of this was for me. And that's the story. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, I have sort of plans for Rosalinda. This is this feels like the end of this story, but not the end of necessarily her story. Although we won't necessarily hear her story, you know, right away. I have another story or two in my head that I want to tell before uh, we continue with the connections continuity. Hope you're enjoying it. And uh, if you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episode episodes cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on facebook or twitter and thanks for listening words and music copyright 2020 cryptobiography llc all rights reserved characters and events are fictional fictionalized or satirical